Hey y'all, what's going on? Uh, welcome back to FED Elements, and in this episode, by special request from Samantha Simon Than, uh, sorry dude, if I'm butchering your name, I'm terrible at that. But uh, by special request, we have Beyond Vertical Drops. Uh, Simon actually asked for three different things. He asked for Beyond Vertical Drop. He asked for uh, a bat wing and a flying snake dive. So in our previous builds we've been working on a non-inverted ride so since uh, we're gonna start doing some inversions I decided to go ahead and do the beyond vertical drop first um, and then work on the flying snake dive for the next episode because I am I've never actually done that but I am looking forward to it because uh, that's definitely one of my favorite elements on Storm Runner at Hershey Park so it'd be interesting to see how that comes out in FVD so we have Hochi the Cat here with me. If you hear any meowing or talking, that's him. He's always got a lot to say, but otherwise we are going to go ahead and get started. So uh, one tip I do want to give you though, before we get started is here, I'm going to go to the Beyond Vertical Drop and Edit, and you'll see this kind of weird uh, little section I have right here in the uh, You can see it consists of straight, and you see it turns red when I do it. Straight, curve, straight, curve, and then straight one more time. And there's a reason I do this. Now, as we know, uh, once you start making a track in FVD, it's very difficult to go back and change things at the beginning. It's not impossible, but it basically requires you to redesign the entire ride and, and really make a lot of alterations uh, in what you've done so far. So that is definitely one of the drawbacks of using FVD and hand building makes things like that much easier. Uh, but one thing I have discovered through just doing this over and over and over, uh, making rides, especially if you're if you're just going in to play around and you're trying to make a ride, and you don't really have any idea of what you want to do. You just have a general idea and you want to get started. I tend to put a few curves and straight sections in at the beginning because what this does is it really gives you some flexibility, especially as you get towards the end or if you decide, oh, I wanted to go back and I want to have it move a different direction or something like that. If you have these curves here, what that does, it gives you two ways of being flexible about this. The first is that you can simply delete one of these if uh, you don't want it there. You say, oh, I want that to go out this way. Now, let's say you start building and you're doing your loops and stuff and oh, it would make more sense if it were going this direction. You can come in here and just simply delete that curve and there you see now it's coming out of the station and just going right. So it's one way it helps out a lot because remember that you can't go back in and add these things, unfortunately. Uh, the second way it helps out is if you get to the end and you're having just a little bit of trouble getting the, the, the final track to line up, one thing you can do is come back to the front here and you can choose one of these curves or straight sections. You can make the straight section longer or you can take this curve and you can make the total angle a little bit longer a little bit shorter and it'll move the entire coaster around so this is not a, a huge uh, game changer but it definitely gives you a little bit more flexibility that's not present in the program so that's something I've discovered just from trial and error so I highly recommend you do that especially if you don't have a, a strict layout for what you want to do uh, in mind before you get started so with all that being said, let's go ahead and show you how to do this vertical, uh, beyond vertical drop real fast because it's very simple. You see that we have a straight section here going eight miles an hour and it's a vertical lift. And then basically to make a, a beyond vertical drop is just two curved pieces and a four section. And there's a very uh, simple reason for that. Uh, if you do the first curve section should still be going at your fixed lift speed. Uh, if you don't have that fixed loop speed there, what will happen is it just won't do anything because it was going 8 miles an hour here and there's nothing it can do if, it, if we don't have a fixed speed. So you obviously want to put that it's going still a fixed speed. And then you get to maybe about a negative 10 degree uh, up here. It's, it's hard to see on, on ride, but I think this is about 10, 15 degrees or so. Uh, and then you switch over to a curve with no fixed speed, so you just allow it to start going free now. So you might be tempted at first, let me just get this back in line, you might be tempted at first to make this all the way uh, to whatever degree you want it to go. So if we make this total angle keep going, uh, you see this really starts curving around because if you don't have this four section here, you might be tempted to think you have to do that first. But unfortunately, you, are, you don't have to do that because, let me move this back to 56 degrees. 
and 56 is just what I'm using here. You, you do what's best for you. Uh, when you do the fourth section, because once we come out of the curve right here, you can see we're already in the negative normal fourth. So in order to maintain that, just in the little bit of time that we have on this fourth section from it going from the negative to the positive, it will automatically curve inward like that. But you can fool around with it too. So I think this one's about 99 degrees if I remember correctly. And one thing I do want to point out is that this is I think 185, 186 feet tall. Uh, I made it really tall because we're going to be doing a bunch of inversions. It's 180, almost 188. We're going to be doing a bunch of inversions, so we need some speed. Uh, so I made it tall, and plus I thought it was easier to see it's not so squashed. as It, would be. it looks a little bit more elegant than it would if it were on a Gerslauer. So that's the basics pretty much of doing a Beyond Vertical Drop. There's really nothing to it. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that on this, uh, I did change the, the center of this graph over by about one just because I thought uh, it looked a little bit better in terms of, now see here, I took it off and now it's not quite beyond vertical. If we wanted to do it beyond vertical, we could just do it like this, just a little bit. But I decided to do it the other way because it seemed to run a little bit more smoothly. So let me put that back to 56. And put the center of this back to one. And there you go, we're right back where we started. So you can fool around with it, you can decide how you want to do it. But the basics of doing a Beyond Vertical Drop are just two curved pieces at the top and the fourth section. So that's pretty much it for this episode. So like I said, uh, the next episode is definitely going to be the Flying Snake Dive. I'm looking forward to doing that, really giving that a try because it's going to test my skills. As always, if you have uh, anything you want to see, let me know. We're, we've got the Flying Snake Dive coming up, we've got the Batwing, we've got a Corkscrew, and we have a Cobra Roll. Uh, so it may take a while, but I'll definitely get to it sooner or later. But let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see. Otherwise, that's it. And I will talk to you the next time. Enjoy the ride.